Good morning everyone, good morning guys and girls. Hi, hello, my name is CJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and of course learn a thing or two from. So yeah, this is immensely exciting. Um, well, all of my uh, narrated art time lives are exciting simply because I did it. So I guess, yeah, to toot my own horn. So, but this one is very unique and very cool because it is um, one of the things that I did for daily spit paints. And I, I'm not very keen on sharing the majority of my daily spit paints. I do them practically every day ever since I started, uh, I'd say about a year and a half ago. And so obviously if it's a daily practice and I started a year and a half ago, I obviously would have a huge collection, which I do have a huge collection in my computer uh, hard drive, but um, I'm not very apt on uh, sharing them simply because uh, my daily spit paints are just really more like warm up sketches. They're not very good looking. Um, but every now and then I do get a few gems here and there. Uh, this is one of those cases. Uh, this one was very, very interesting. Um, and so, yeah, um, it's really exciting to share it. Uh, one thing to make a note of um, is that this summer, this upcoming summer, is actually going to be very, very interesting because I'm going to be sharing a lot of my daily spit paints, at least some of my favorite ones. Um, I'm probably going to share like, I don't know, maybe four or six of them. <laughs> so, um, out of the hundreds I have, <laughs> you can tell my success rate. Wow. Out of a hundreds, you, you're only sharing six. So, but yeah, um, I'm only sharing a few just because I really jury my, my artwork. Um, I think if you are a serious artist, I think it's very, very important for you to have, uh, a good healthy balance about your artwork you know if you're sitting there constantly thinking that every single thing that you do is great and awesome then you're never ever going to learn so obviously i dream my artwork simply because i know what's good what's not good i know what works and uh more importantly i know what i can make a lesson out of you know so sometimes i will make a video of an artwork that i'm not too happy with I'm not too proud of, but something unique happened during the creation process of that artwork that I'll go ahead and post it because I know we can learn a thing or two from that aforementioned aff aforementioned video. So, so yeah, but this one's very cool because I combined two prompts for that day. So the, there are two prompts that I decided to um, combine was bamboo hat. That was one of the prompts for, for the daily speed prompt spilly daily spit paint of that day and then cyborg arm so i basically ended up those two prompts into this one really cool looking illustration and um real quick uh, obviously i started talking about um daily spit paint prompts and whatnot and i just realized that some people um, might not be familiar with the daily spit paint group in facebook it's a private, well, not a private, it's a public group in Facebook that anyone could join. And the whole goal of the group is to just encourage people to continuously draw and paint every day by providing them with prompts. Um, but yeah, it's a spit paint group and the whole goal is to learn sp speed painting techniques. Um, you get 30 minutes to do your illustration. That's it. <laughs> so... It is strenuous, very, very strenuous, but it is very much an industry practice um, for um, a lot of the media driven industries such as animation and the video game industries and whatnot. And it makes sense if you're creating volume, you know, you're more keen on putting out um, tons of artwork versus quality, you know. Um, obviously quality is needed and all that, but obviously you can refine things farther on, farther on. So, but yeah, uh, that's what speed painting is all about really is just to do really fast work artwork. And ironically enough, I mean, even though it's a huge standard practice in, in a lot of industries, um, 
you could actually practice this too in your own fine art practice um the impression is we're very much speed painters uh, they did a lot of their artwork very fast and very quick so and they're a good example of speed painters that's not really driven by a need of their industry that they belong to so yeah but enough about that let us talk about what is going on in the screen right now so the first five minutes we were just watching me sketch out this samurai um cyborg sem cyborg mech robot well, you know cyborg is supposed to be a combination of man and human but i pretty much ended up just doing a robot a robot mech is pretty much what i ended up doing and so i ended up sketching this character that's like a robot character of some sort and obviously i ended up giving him a cyborg metallic uh outfit and a bamboo hat so um so yeah i was just doing my line sketch when i first started out with daily spit paint i wasn't doing the line sketch as much because i was trying to save time but i really realized that it does help a lot you know so i started budgeting my time frame um with like the first five minutes just having some form of layout sketch ideally i would like for this sketch to be down to three minutes but i'm gonna be realistic and just give myself five minutes because i could get a lot more details in with five minutes versus three as you can see uh, i kind of got fancy with her uh, with this guy's robes here um so yeah um that's what happened in the first five minutes and then after that i did these gradients gr color gradients basically is what i would call it like you can see that there's some green to the lower right and some orange and reddish and yellows in the top and on the right and so i basically did like a gradient background with multi a multi-color gradient background and i turned down the saturation on it to make it more pastel like and basically uh part of the reason why i was doing this is so that i could um isolate the background from the foreground and really make the foreground pop out so as you can see i desaturated well not really desaturated but i turned down the saturation in the background and i obviously pump up the saturation in the foreground and so yeah, um, now I'm going to do my very, very unique coloring, which the way I do my coloring is basically I take this random mech brush that I have um, and it basically creates just random shapes, random mech shapes. And then after I have, after, um, or not only does it create random mech shapes, but it also does random hues. Uh, it has a hue variation. Like a good example of it is the blue that I put down uh, on top where this uh, bamboo hat is. You can tell that there's some purples in there together with blues. Um, so uh, I basically use this brush to kind of just put a few random colors in, a few uh random shapes in it's very chaotic at first um and yeah it's kind of crazy and unique and chaotic but i mean there's a method to this madness i'm basically just laying down these colors for now and what i'm gonna end up doing after i lay down these colors is that i'm gonna blend them with the blending brush a textured blending brush and what this blending brush will do is that it will harmonize the colors um it's basically like kind of like working like with pastels because i um when i was first exposed to color when i was first starting my art journey i was using pastels now i was really really surprised at what it can do because obviously before that my the only thing i've ever done and worked with or the only thing i've ever worked with was crayola crayons and cray crayola crayons obviously doesn't blend together you know so i was really surprised to find out that colors blend like wow you know you could combine red and yellow to make orange i didn't know that you know and so you know having that revealed to me was very very cool 
And so basically this this is what kind of like my practice has been where I just kind of just combine just weird unique colors in the hopes that when I blend them that they will create interesting color shapes. Um, so I mean that's really just the goal of what I'm doing here. So and I just realized that I started with a very very small canvas. I used to do this way back in the day where I would start out with a very very small canvas uh, and then slowly blow things up. Um, nowadays I just start out with a very big canvas so yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, I'm still in the process of like laying down some colors. Uh, I'm adding some more color noise. I guess it's another way for me to put it. Um, and I also try to deepen some of the shadows by doing uh, some multiply on there. Like I would basically take the same brush, choose a color, and then set it to multiply just to kind of darken things up a little bit. And then I also do a color dodge uh, where I kind of lighten some uh, colors of the piece. And then obviously as soon as I have, I'm happy with all the colors I put in. Again, like I mentioned, I'm going to use the textured brush which I've selected and then slowly blend the colors in so that I could uh, get this base paint that I work on and when I do my blending thing I make sure that I blend it in recognize I blend my colors into recognizable shapes like I don't just go blending crazy you know because if I blend crazy then I would lose um, I would lose sight of the shape so like for example in the cyborg hat the, not the cyborg hat, the bamboo hat that I'm working on. I'm very, very careful to um, blend the areas separately. Like I blended the bottom part first, and then I, and, and then obviously I blended the top first, or the top next, and then again I'm about to blend like the bottom part of the hat. So I'm always, always on the lookout for. Here's another multiply action that I'm doing because I realize that. The bottom part of the hat on the right side is too light, so I have to darken things up a little bit. And then obviously I'm gonna go back with the blending brush and blend things around. But yeah, I try to make sure that I preserve the shapes um, just so that I could still read it better later on when, when I do my detailing. So yeah, um, I'm adding the color dodge for now and then doing the blending later and then I will continue with this artwork and I will continue with this artwork after I do my blending. I mean, I'll detail the artwork after I do my blending, so.
so at this point in time, I have begun my detailing process. Um, so right after I did my blending thing, um, I basically did a marquee selection of the robot. Well, first of all, I upscaled it again to a bigger resolution, um, 3700 to like 5000. And then after that, I did a marquee selection uh, around my character uh, so I could get rid of some of the extraneous um, markings that I have outside of his body. And just to kind of give him some sharper edges, which is what I just did um, not too long ago. And then now I am slowly going over uh, and just adding details. So I first started with uh, some highlights because I felt like I needed, um, well, not so much as highlights on the character, but I felt like the bamboo hat and the side of his arm needed a little bit of uh, lightening. So I lightened it up with uh, very bright yellow. Uh, I added that on there. Um, I'll eventually add some more highlights later on, but for now I just added those yellow. Just to kind of contrast the deeper shadows that is going on on the right side or on the left side of the cyborg character. And then for now, uh, what I'm doing right now is basically just doing some outlines of details on his arm. Uh, this is random basically and um, as you can see, uh, especially on the cyborg's face, um, the cyborg's face just has all this crazy colors on there, right? And, and basically there's like no distinct um, idea of what's going on in the face at all and this is why I kind of like the way I do things with my colors where I get all this crazy color noises is because once I go back in and do some detailing like the way I'm working like the way I'm doing now on the cyborg arm I can just pick just random parts to combine into this card you know so I basically took this really dark uh, line and started creating outlines based, based on the color shapes that I was seeing, you know, so obviously I saw that I could um, isolate some of the pink on the robot's arm uh, on top, and that's basically what ended up basically being the top of his arm, there's some pinks on there, and then obviously the blues ended up, or the cyans, the bright cyans ended up being in the lower part, um, and so yeah, I... You know, I kind of just look for all these interesting shapes basically when I do my outline, you know, uh, or when I do my detailing. And so I love the mess that I make, you know, I on purpose make such a huge mess with some of my colors just so that I could get to this part where I could have fun, you know, making just some random decisions with the detailing. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically what I'm doing uh, with my detailing. Uh, my detailing is a three-step process. I delineate my edges first, you know, make things sharper, make things clearer to read. As in the case of the samurai swords, I'm working on it now um, where I'm adding some straight lines just to kind of indicate, hey, this is where all his swords are, basically. Um, so yeah, I delineate the edges just to make it read cleaner and then of course, I accentuate the shadows. I mentioned this before, where I mean the shadows a little bit deeper and darker if it needs deeping, uh, if it needs to be a little darker. And then, of course, I add highlights. So, which is always the last step. Well, not always the last step, but for the most part, it almost always ends up being the last step. So yeah. But yeah, I just absolutely love how uh, simple this illustration was and how. I was able, how quickly I was able to pull it off in 30 minutes. Um, it's a very simple design. It's not something new for me because the very, very first speed paint that I did was a cyborg too. Um, and that was, what I, I even did that drawing illustration even way before I joined Daily Speed Paint. And I was just having fun, you know, I was just learning creative for the first time and so I was just like making 
all these weird crazy shapes right I was basically all I did was what I just did I put down a bunch of colors and just randomly mix them all with the blender texture brush and then as soon as I have them mixed in I started carving out the shapes right um, kind of like the way I'm doing it with the cyborg face right now where I'm kind of uh, sharpening and sharpening the shapes that the colors make is what I'm trying to do but anyways yeah the very first cyborg portrait that I did was just like 35 minutes it was like one of the fastest drawings I did at that point and I was like wow I can't believe I finished something in 35 minutes and it looked good it looks so good and honestly I look way better than this one um, but ever since that particular um, illustration I'm adding highlights on the robot's face just to kind of indicate that it's a metal but yeah uh, ever since that particular illustration I just been hooked with robots um, it's one of the biggest motifs in my portfolio you will always see robots in my portfolio and yeah I can't help it they look great <laughs> they look awesome they're fun to draw so I'm just gonna keep drawing it why not <laughs> right but yeah But anyways, yeah, I mean, after that one illustration, I was just hooked on doing these kind of speed paints and doing these kind of characters. Wow, I just realized that I made an error on the way the shadows fall. I don't think that should be so orange as it is right now. And I'm talking about the top of his shoulders. I feel like that should be in shadow. Wow. Okay. How come did I, how come I never noticed that before until now? That's pretty funny. But yeah, taking a good look at how this is created always kind of makes me think of things that I never thought of before. Which is part of the reason why I like watching these videos again. Because it's like, oh yeah, I did that. I forgot. So yeah, um, mind you, I did this last year, uh, way back last year. Actually, no, I did this in December 19 of 2019. I just realized that. Yeah, it's been more than a year since I've done this. But man. Even after a year and a half or a year and a month, I still love this piece. So, but anyways, this piece is almost done. I'm just adding like some final touches uh, here and there, kind of delineating my edges, sharpening that right side of the cyborg or left side or you know left side right now. So yeah, and yeah, just kind of adding my final touches. And obviously the cyborg is super saturated, so he stands nicely against that very pastel background. So yeah, nice color harmony there. All right, this is it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.